With Cleves Publishing Incorporated, we assure you as our partners to be there throughout the journey. We are with you in every step of the way. Technology is continuously evolving and Cleves is riding with it. From print to digital, Cleves got you covered with the products that we offer. Spearheading Cleves products are the Cleveflets, an e-learning portal for teachers only, and the Leveraging Education Augmenting the Future or LEAF for student teacher access. For teachers, administrators, and school owners, we have the Cleves Shares. It is perfect for you in maneuvering fast-paced demands of the education field as we collaborate in creating a balanced amalgam of theories, pedagogies, and practices inside and outside of the realm of the learning environments. Reimagine, reinforce, recognize, to make quality education through a variety of lectures, trainings, and webinars in aid of instruction classroom management, and institution management. These offerings are perfect responses. In connection to Cleves Shares, to provide service beyond sales, Cleves also has the Cleves Cares for its partner mission schools in providing them with capacity building focused branding or rebranding the institution inside and out. It also practices reimagining various school scenarios and responses to the needs of the time reinforcing school climate and culture through different webinars conducted among institution partners and in recognizing the value of each stakeholder in the success of value-laden instruction delivery. Another product of Cleves is the Cleves Assist. This offering features a 24-7 hotline for technical assistance in the use and maintenance of the Cleflets and LEAF. Almost everyone in the academe can benefit from this, from the teachers, admins, and school owners to the students and parents. Cleves Assists aims to provide an assistance response team to address immediate technical concerns while ensuring the users the full utilization of the Cleflets and LEAF. It also offers visits with partners to address offline concerns when needed. We ensure quality service delivered through this hotline assistance to our partners, always. And lastly, Cleves Thinks. Together with the partners, we provide them with external consultations for present and future research agenda, accreditation certification, and imaging one. Cleves Thinks that with a client in full swing, it is redirecting the winds within their institutions. Cleves Thinks is for teachers, administrators, school owners, students, parents, and even extended service communities and collaborative partner agencies. Through innovative designs, proactive responses, and reconfigured goals, established institutions are on the verge of the fourth going to the fifth industrial revolution. Strong definitive vision is what's needed in remaining relevant and competent in this world. And this is what Cleves is all about. Welcome to your own unlimited learning ecosystem created by Odilo. Everyone learns differently, and today, more than ever, educators need to provide differentiated and adaptive learning. This personalization should speak to a learner's needs, skills, and interests, and intelligent learning solutions have become a must-have for education institutions. To solve the Blooms to Sigma problem, schools and parents must put the learner at the heart of the technology tools that enable one-on-one -on -one learning. Odilo uses data-driven, artificial intelligence-powered solutions to offer a personalized experience and unlimited learning possibilities. This is what we call an unlimited learning ecosystem. Every institution that works with Odilo uses our integrated technology to create unlimited learning opportunities and to provide intelligent Netflix-style experiences that are tailored to the learner and increase engagement. We have demonstrated impact in improving reading and writing habits by three to five times. 
We offer unified and frictionless access to more than 3 million multimedia titles, ebooks, videos, audiobooks, courses, podcasts, magazines, textbooks, newspapers, and more. Over 3 million titles from the best publishers all around the world, so you have all ebooks and learning resources you need in one place. And thanks to our flexible lending models, families can save up to 90% on buying physical titles with Odilo. Educators can create personalized learning experiences to address individual students' learning gaps by combining the multimedia titles with their own content resources and incorporate assessments at different parts of the learning experience. Odilo gives you the ability to fuse assessments for learning, assessments of learning, and assessments as learning through the learning paths and learning clubs that encourage collaborative and group learning. Our mission is to democratize quality educational content and provide personalized platforms for schools, making sure that every learning journey will become unique with a frictionless user experience. We are trusted by more than 146 million users in more than 40 countries around the world. More than 6,000 institutions already have their own unlimited learning ecosystem. What about you? With the new normal, the digital transformation process has accelerated and is challenging the educational system. Families more than ever need the online learning process to be easy and exciting, available to them 24-7, and need instant access to thousands of digital content resources. Welcome to your new partner that is not only helping schools support families better, but creating new opportunities to make learning even more collaborative and personalized. Introducing your school's own unlimited learning ecosystem, powered by Odillo. We are the world's first organization that integrates seamlessly with technology, AI, content from thousands of the best providers, and intelligent learning services, so that each school can promote a culture of unlimited learning possibilities and collaboration the way you want it. Imagine having your own unlimited learning ecosystem with your own branding that personalizes content for each user, that enables families to share access at home, that brings the class together online to learn different things in a structured and an interactive way. On top of this, as it's fully customized, your schools can be specifically promoting the values and learning initiatives that are most important to you. Exciting, right? We think so. We have even proven to increase reading habits by five and reduce the barriers to learning with the benefit of both online, offline access as well as inclusive features so no one is left behind. So, what is in your own unlimited learning ecosystem? Your own branding, a personalized experience, access to the best multimedia content from over 3 million titles and also your own, interactive reading and writing clubs, learning intelligence, first-class support from a learning coach and a team. We also have worked hard to empower both teachers and families. Both will have access to not only the content, but lots of learning intelligence to provide more support for their students. And unlike others, we are truly multimedia. Ebooks, videos, audiobooks, courses, podcasts, and we have access to over 3 million multimedia titles from over 5,000 of the world's best providers. This way, we can ensure we support learners of all abilities and preferences. And thanks to our flexible loan models, families can have unlimited access to great content. Today, more than 140 million users in almost 50 countries around the world trust Odillo and have been able to make a difference. Be ahead of the curve and amplify your community's learning possibilities by building an unlimited learning ecosystem for your school today. change. Because of this, our learners will need a different set of skills to thrive and be successful. 
It is in our hands as educators to create innovative teaching and learning experiences that will prepare the youth for all the uncertainties that lay ahead. Whether it's for classroom, distance, or blended learning, we at DIWA are committed to help you create innovative teaching and learning experiences with DIWA 5G. Let's explore DIWA 5G! DIWA 5G is designed to provide students with rich learning experiences. DIWA 5G inspires educators to be creative and productive amplifying the power of schools to change lives. DIWA 5G textbooks provide a clear roadmap for grade and subject-specific learning goals. They are designed to give teachers and students clarity on key concepts and core ideas through structured content, enhanced interactive features, and additional resources. And to help teachers with their synchronous and asynchronous classes, DIWA 5G textbooks include the Teacher's Guide, a modular approach to flexible learning delivery, a tool that contains teaching instructions and student assessments for online and offline learning delivery. Next up, DIWA 5G magazines are Supplemental Educational Magazines or SEMS. They are as informative as textbooks but are more appealing and less intimidating to students because of their format and their capability to deliver manageable chunks of information that result in higher knowledge retention. With enhanced accessibility and enriched interactivity, these educational magazines help learners develop new ideas and conduct profound investigations. We also have DIWA 5G Systems, which is Genio e-learning, a complete and safe learning management system. It is loaded with interactive multimedia content and equipped with collaboration tools and the robust support service that meet the changing education ecosystem and its stakeholders. And lastly, DIWA 5G Assessment is Checkbox. To ensure the integrity of learning continuity, DIWA's online gamified assessment portal makes possible a productive exchange of instructional feedback between teachers and students. With ready-made and customized drills and activities found in the platform, DIWA 5G Assessment helps students achieve mastery in different subject areas while keeping them excited and interested. All of these DIWA 5G educational resources make richer teaching and learning experiences because of these five qualities. Engaging. Flexible. Accessible Enriching And Relevant That's the 5G. 5G Education Evolve Welcome to the register session of the CEAP NCR General Assembly entitled Gifted to Give. I am Ms. Maricel from La Salle Green Hills and I will be your moderator for today's learning session 8 entitled Bold Strokes Positioning the Register in the New Normal. Just some conference reminders for our session this morning. For easier acknowledgement, Please change your Zoom display name with the following format. School name, underscore, full name, for example, Manila Cathedral School, underscore, 
Juan de la Cruz. Please ensure that your microphone starts on mute and always keep muted except when you want to ask questions or you are asked to speak. This will prevent background noise from disrupting our proceedings this morning. Likewise, if your camera is on, please be aware of your movements. Turn off your camera if you intend to leave or stand up for a while. Okay, we want to remind everyone again to be aware of their surroundings and their environment because we are many in this group. If you have attended the other sessions, you may already know that we have very exciting news. Since we are holding our General Assembly virtually, we now have the CNGA 2021 virtual photo booth. Here's how to participate. The CNG, uh, you will find the CNGA 2021 virtual photo booth link later in our Zoom chat box. The FB Live, FB Live comment section. So please, Take a selfie with the moderator or the speaker on the computer screen. Like and follow the official CAPNCR FB page and subscribe to the CAPNCR official YouTube channel. Lastly, upload your photo on FB using the hashtags hashtag CAPNCR and, C and hashtag CNGA2021. Each delegate must also follow and subscribe to the official CEAP NCR FB page and YouTube channel. Once verified, the Secretariat will endorse and reveal the name of one winner per day towards the end of the last learning session. Second, they will also post the name of the winner in the official CEAP NCR Facebook page. And lastly, they will communicate with the winner on how to claim the, the prize of 1,000 pesos worth of GCash. Please be reminded that in order to qualify, you must be a school personnel or a student of a CEAP NCR member school. You must also agree that CEAP NCR is authorized to handle the posting of pictures on any of the CEAP NCR social media networks. Furthermore, Facebook accounts must be on public setting at the time the entry is submitted for the contest. So please make sure to take your photo with our speaker for our virtual photo booth and upload to FB using the hashtags Hashtag CAPNCR and hashtag CNGA2021. To lead us in the opening prayer, let us call on Mrs. Connie Domayeg, the Registrar of St. Scholastica's Academy, Marikina. Let us pause for a while and remember that we are in God's loving presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our loving Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this learning session. We lift up to you our resource speaker and everyone here present. Help us engage in meaningful discussion and allow us to grow closer as a group. Fill us with your spirit and strengthen our commitment to the ministry you have entrusted to us. Constantly remind us that all we do here today, all the decisions that we make, and all that we accomplish is for the pursuit of truth, for your greater glory, and for the love of the academic community especially the students whom you called us to serve. 
We make this prayer through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for beginning our session today with that inspiring prayer. At this point, we request everyone to click the heart button for Mr. Julio Rodilla Jr., our Registrar's Committee Chair, who will welcome all of us to this session. I, yes. All right. I think we're just having some uh, audio uh, difficulties. Okay. Hi, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Good morning, everyone. We are halfway of, uh, at the end of 2021 already. And we've been dealing with this health crisis for almost two years, hoping that everything would be back from the way it used to be, seems far from now. However, what is promising now is that we get to adjust and evolve to a better and bolder partner in providing quality education. Through this, we will assure that no matter how hard these things for all of us, we will stay genuine to our sworn duty and be of value in our chosen obligation. We commit in providing the best experience to our stakeholders, especially students, for their admission, enrollment, and processing of documents. This pandemic has changed us differently and transformed ways we have never imagined. It magnifies our curiosity, advance our skills, challenge the norms, shifted paradigm, and altered the educational ecosystem. But what became evident that despite these changes, the virtue of a Christian-centered organization where we value everyone and everything, every time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Jules. Every year, we gather together as a region to update ourselves with new innovations, recent laws and policies, and current issues. This year, as we enter the second year of online classes and transactions, we are confronted <laughs> difficulties that may prove to be our new normal. We continue to review our SOPs to provide quality service to our stakeholders. And we are also excited to hear from our esteemed speaker. Our General Assembly would not have been possible without our very generous sponsors. Our gold sponsors. Diwa Learning System, Odilo,
Tribal Group, Cliffs Publishing, Here, our, here are our silver sponsors, Aviva Publishing House and Don Bosco Press. Phoenix Publishing House and Techno Kids. Rex Education and the Inteligente Publishing. Sibs. Publishing House, and Vicarish Publication and Trading, and Tech Factors Incorporated. And lastly, our bronze sponsors, Johnny and Hansel Publications, Dream Books Publication, and Excelandia IT Services. Once again, Thank you to all our gold, silver, and bronze sponsors. So, is everyone ready for our main event? Hit your thumbs up, party, or heart button if you're eager to hear from our speaker. Please make sure to jot down your questions as we will be having an open forum later. We now call on our we, we now call on Mrs. Riza Martinez, the Registrar of St. Pedro Poveda College, to introduce our speaker. Today's speaker is a graduate of St. Paul University, Manila, with a magna cum laude in nursing. She earned a Master of Nursing degree from the University of Asia and the Pacific and a Doctor of Nursing Education from St. Paul, Manila. She previously worked as a healthcare provider at Huyenga Healthcare in California, USA, as a patient educator at Asian Hospital and Medical Center, and as a nurse at St. Luke's Medical Center. Due to her academic passion and commitment to St. Paul University, Manila, she chose to teach undergraduate and graduate courses in the College of Nursing and the College of Education. She has worked there for over two decades, holding various positions such as Director of Planning and Quality Assurance from 2011 to 2017, and Academic Chairperson and Dean at College of Nursing from 2009 to 2011. Currently, she's the Director of Paulinian Leadership Academy and the Head of the University Research Council. She is also a PASCO accreditor, a researcher, and has been invited to, to speak at various seminars as a resource person. I'm sure you're all excited to meet our speaker at this point. With a virtual applause, let us now welcome Dr. Maria Incarnacion Adi Chanko, also known as Doc Shen. Thank you, Riza. And uh, good morning, everyone. Before I start, allow me to thank the organizers, especially Jules Chudelia, one of our graduates in the Academic Services Support Master's Program. I hope you're all safe and in good health. Once again, I'm Dr. DiCianco from St. Paul University, Manila. My talk is entitled Bold Strokes, Positioning the Register in the New Normal. Some now term this as the now normal, because we're not going to get back to how it was before. Regardless of the trend, the situation we are right we are in right now is still new and the implications to us in the academic world are great. I have never been a registrar as uh, shared to you by uh, Riz and I don't think I qualify. My experience clo working closely with the registrar is from the lens of a vice president for academics. And let me tell everyone, one main reason I survived the BPA position was because of an excellent university registrar. Shout out to Miss Reggie Cachero. Thank you. Okay, next slide. Please, Jules. I, I, am I on my second slide now? I cannot see. Okay, I always start 
my talks with definition of terms as I am a believer in setting the level of expectations from the onset. In my topic, the word I wanted to define is bold strokes. This means daring actions or initiatives. So in this situation, we are all in right now, a situation no one forecasted, not a single one thought we will be, uh, you know, part of this pandemic. We must all take leaps, dare, and take initiatives. Next. There is limited information and studies in this specific field. I, it took me a long time, you know, to go around and look for information. So the flow of my discussion is on the following. Traits of the registrar in the new normal. And I'm happy to see somebody texting uh, in the chat box that this is her, uh, this is a new position for her. Evolving role of the registrar for those who have been in uh, this field for quite some time. And the professional practice for registrar. We all have some things to learn unlearn and relearn. Next, please. Pero trivia muna, okay? What year did the word registrar evolve? Okay, please type in the chat box. The first person to type the correct answer gets a 200 pesos prize from me. So whoever wins, give me your number. I'll send it through Gcash. Oh, now na, go! 1960, sige, lower, uh, earlier pa, sige, 1960, pinanganak na ako niya, 1950, hindi pa ako pinanganak dyan, older pa, much, 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 much older, hindi naman, ano ah, hindi naman during the time of Christ ito, wala pa tang registrards doon, Parisis lag. 19 older, super, super older. Walang makatakuha ng 200. Ay, 17th century. Move pa, back, back, back. Grabe, no? Ganun katagal ng re. 1571. Wow, ang ganda. Sino naglagay nun? 1500? Hindi. Oh, sige pa. Oh, wala na ata. 1880? Hindi nga. Ito. <laughs> <laughs> Natatawa ako. O oh, gising sila Diyos. Oh, no, happy tayo. Hindi nga 19th century. Hindi nga 15th century. O sige nga. Because of limited time, baka sabihin nyo, ito lang ang slides ko. Post mo na, Jules. Wala. Walang winner. 1446. Oh my goodness. Ha? Huh? Wow. So I checked. 1446 pa kayo ang red in this world registrars, okay? So I check, anong, year, anong period ito? Please, please, Jules, next. Next slide. Imagine mo, medieval period. I had to post a picture of the medieval period. I don't know if there was a Philippines then. I'm not I, I, I failed in that, uh, <laughs> in that subject. So during that time, wow, yes. Uh, uh, G Tago says, wow, really, your job is the second one, the second position to be created in an academic institution. The first one was the word chancellor. So next to the chancellor was the registrar then. My God, oh, when I read this, I was like, oh my God, ang bigat pala ng word ng registrar. So I was really surprised, you know, therefore this position has already existed. For the past 575 years na siya. And what did they do then during the medieval period? What did the registrars do then? Yeah, no, I wrote it down for you on the on this slide. Read it na lang, okay? Because my worry is if you're still doing this, you are still in the medieval period. Okay? We need to have bold strokes, my goodness. <laughs> oh my God, if, if the registrar is this doing this, drafting letters, making copies of documents, new normal na nga eh. Nakailang pandemic na. Nang Spanish, wala pa Spanish flu dyan. Okay, so let's move on. Next, please. 
So as I earlier said, I could not find any adequate li literature in this field. So I decided to make my own. Okay? So I asked the vice presidents in my GC, kasama dun si Christ Sister Christine ng SMEC. And I have a GC with um, my classmates in AIM, the presidents and vice presidents who took a uh, certain course. So I asked them this question. Sabi ko, patulong naman. I could not find any local literature on register except for position. Marami atang, ano, nag-resign na registra sa new normal. So, ang daming, ano, panawagan for this position. But I was looking, what makes a register? Wala. So, I asked them, oh, okay, help me. What one trait is needed among college and university registrars in the new normal? Okay, so... Again, kasi meron akong 200 eh. Sige nga, ano kaya ang number one sagot? Kasi I'll show you the five top answers. The first one to give me the first answer, the first number one gets a prize. At tingnan ko nga, Julesy, no? Sino-sino ba to? Wow, iba-iba. Gising kayo, ah. Nakakatuwa. So sabi naman kanina, yung in Europe daw, tama ka from assumption. So the first one who said integrity, Mary Ann said integrity. Uh, I don't know, from Savior School said innovative. Okay, Rodrigo said patience, true, responsible from St. Paul. Assumption, antipolo, adaptive, flexible, adaptable, patient, trustworthy, patient. Wow, hospitable, adaptable, flexible, orderly, accurate. Hey, maybe I, I think you already know. But then, you're interested who will get the first, ano, di ba? Sige, let's show it to them, Jules. And survey says, di ba? Yung mga ka-age ko, alam nyo to. Survey says, number five. Five muna. First, the number five and fifth answer, what is? Precise. Precision ang kailangan. I'll show you, uh, bar, um, I'll discuss them in detail, okay? Kasi this is my only local literature. I had to make it. I had to do the study myself. Number four. Pindot mo, Jules. Ta -da 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 -da. Wala, wala pa. Okay, curriculum aware. I didn't know a better word. Basta yun ang sinabi nila. More on curriculum. Number three. Adaptable and flexible. So some of you got it, but that's not number one. Okay, number two. Second top answer is adapt with technology. And the first answer, may winner eh. I saw the answer being posted here. Oh, may mga humahabol. Pa, may winner na eh. So, <laughs> pag may humahabol, may loko lang. Okay? And number one is with integrity. Okay? So, sino nga yun? The first person really who typed in integrity. Anong name niya? Uh, give, uh, text me ah, or text Jules. I'll be the one to give you the 200. Yay! Mary Ann from SJDFI. I mean, SJDFI. So, mamiya natin alamin. So, you got the correct number one answer. Okay, so next, please. Next slide. So, I will now start discussing from top one to five naman. Because the first should make an impact. And that should be the first thing that you'll remember. You need to remember integrity. <clears throat> Most shared this. Majority of my GCs, the uh, presidents and vice presidents in my GC shared, said integrity. And you are correct. Integrity of records specifically and record management. Sabi nila, regardless of the challenges in the new normal, nilagay pa talaga, students' records must remain true and absolutely correct. So I looked up this word, integrity, and I saw a quote from Warren Buffett, a buffet, Buffett, Buffett, I don't know how you say it. So I love this quote. He said, in looking for people to hire, especially those who are new in register, look for three qualities, sabi niya, integrity, intelligence, and energy. I'm sure you are the registrar right now because you're intelligent. You know, you, have, you can't be a registrar if you're not intelligent. But behind that, sabi niya, 
But if they don't have the first, which is integrity, the other two will kill you. Well, imagine mo, in the registrar, in the new normal, where everything is computer-based, everything can be changed with uh, ano yon? a pin dot, diba? Niya talaga. a pin dot of your finger, a press of your finger, integrity is in question, you know, my goodness. And that and integrity of records will affect a life or the lives of the people forever. See how heavy it is to be a, a registrar. So integrity is the first one. <clears throat> and this one, I hope you, you take this down, the quotation from Warren Buffett, because it will affect you in your life as a registrar. Okay? So okay lang may intelligence and energy, basta hindi nyo tanggalin yung integrity. Next. Adapt with technology was the second top answer among our local uh, institution leaders, uh, academic institution. And what did they say? So these are the na, ano, quotations lifted. No? The new normal requires registrars to work with LMS and they need to work with IT people. So ang ka-interface nyo talaga is with the IT in the new normal, hindi yung ballpen and pets, hindi national, hindi na bookstore. <laughs> IT na, okay? So you have to be friends with IT because you have to collaborate, communicate, and coexist no, in the new normal. So if you are not adept with technology, my God, and that, that, ako, I'm not, so I can never be a registrar. Your life will be chaotic, you know? Because students right now are the ASAP. ASAP yan, no? They want everything now, now, now. Because they grew up in a microwave, Um world where everything is just press and boom, you have it. So these are what you're dealing with, the population you're dealing with. And the parents of your of your students are in their 40s. They know technology. So you just have to keep pace with them, okay? Everything in the new normal is online. Sorry for the S that should be in. Everything in the new normal is online. They have to be techie. That's what they said in my, uh, when I asked them, okay? <clears throat> so I searched for the new word, the word new technology. What does that mean? And saw this quotation, which I believe is perfect for your role. And it says, what new technology does is create new opportunities to do a job what customers want done. You know, you may you may think of yourself as a non-frontliner in the academics uh institution but you are because everything goes through you kaya nga you carry the maze eh. kaya nga you are you know you should be positioned in the middle i think a lot of positioning wise structurally ha registrars are in the middle because you are in the middle of everything in the institution okay and you have to take charge of that you have to acknowledge that and we use technology to make life not easier just for you for us but to make sure our customers get what they want faster, you know, especially one of the presidents also told me, Shen, ilagay mo nga that the, the, if the registrars, the eh, president naman siya, you know, I was laughing at that kasi he really sent me a, a private message and tell the registrars that uh, if they can lessen the, uh, the time, you know, the POI has to be how many days. Can they not lessen that because it is uh, technology-based or everything is now in the system? And I was I texted him, but tell it to the president. Why don't you tell them? And then she's like, you asked me a question and now I'm contra mo. So here I am telling you that his request is that, you know, to tell the registrar to bring down now the number of uh, days of uh, waiting period or grace period for the release of documents. So sabi niya, after all, they should be adept with technology. And technology should work for you and mostly, and most importantly, for your clients. Okay, next. Adaptable and flexible. You know, I place this under one <clears throat> theme. Allow me to call them themes. Feeling ko nag-research talaga ako. And these are what they said. Adapt, uh, <clears throat> adaptability to many necessary changes. Uh, yeah, adaptability to many necessary changes, but staying true to his purpose as a registrar. May hugot itong isang president. 
no? Ewan ko, ba't niya nilagay? I didn't question anymore kasi owner naman siya ng school nila. So, okay lang. And flexible in terms of time frames. Ito pa, numabas na naman. Like processing and response time. Sabi niya, we are in an ASAP world. ASAP, di ba? So, I decided to <clears throat> differentiate. What's, a, what's the difference between adaptability and flexibility? Because these two words came, kept coming back. Kept us you know, being said in my uh, text. So adaptability is a willingness to confront or change your own ideas and perception. Are you willing to do that? Are you will? Is your mind right now willing to go to the new or next normal? Because it lies on you as a registrar. We may tell you a lot of things, do this, do this, let's improve this, make this faster because we're dealing with the new generation. But are you willing to confront them and change them? Because as long as you're not, we'll have a difficult time in the new normal. And, uh, you know, it's in your hands. You know what, you know the system in your own school. And flexibility is more a willingness to meet others halfway. So, who do you want to meet halfway? You want to meet the requirements and needs of the clients, and yet you want to uh, meet the needs of your superior. So you're always in the middle. How do you please them? And at the same time, please the customers. Because <clears throat> upon admission, they see you, and after uh, upon graduation, they get back to you. So that's the unit. That's how critical the registrar's office is. And in the virtual world, you don't need you just don't need to be adaptable and flexible as earlier said you have to be adept with technology because movements adaptability and flexibility is it based in this new normal so look at your skills how 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 are you able to do this in this new normal okay next please the fourth one is curriculum aware Okay, I guess this is self-explanatory. And according to my sources, they believe, can I have the next slide, please? They believe that that one trait is being familiar with shed for depth ed memorandum orders or whatever you call it in depth ed. You must know because we don't want to put the school in a bad light just because no one knows what the rules and registrar, it usually gets... Uh, emailed to you, you know, and everything is fast nowadays. It's so, you, you imagine you can do more work while working from home because you are just looking at your computer and, you know, have, you have three gadgets and you can do everything all at the same time. So, <clears throat> uh, and one said, a strong background in curriculum, okay? So, so if you ask me, do I have to know what the teachers do and what the courses are? What is what are the tracks? I'm just a registrar. The answer is yes. You are the master. <laughs> you you even know more about these things because you are the one who makes sure that everything is correct. You know that we, what we give to the students, everything that we give to the students are precise are concise and are aligned to what should be. Okay? So, yan talaga, you know? Yung mga bagong registrar dyan, ha? Kapit. Kapit kayo dyan. Kasi akala nyo, ah, registrar na lang ako. Ayoko na magturo. Oh my goodness, you know? Scary. Scary scary job to be a registrar. <laughs> okay, next piece. And the fifth is precision. Okay? Uh, I thought this would come up first, but the integrity came up first. So I cannot, uh, you know, uh, make my own because this one is uh, really from, uh, I got this from my question and these are what came out. So what about precision? <clears throat> Actually, what was sent to me was a mixture of precision and uh, accuracy on record keeping and handling records. So this got me curious. Is it better for registrars to be accurate or Precise, okay? Next, I, I think I have uh, another thing in this slide, Jules. I have a difference between precision and accuracy. Pala. None, there's none, okay? But I think you, you need, you know, both. 
Tapos press ko yan. There you go. Accuracy and uh, that's the difference between accuracy and precision. They're not the same thing. And I'm sure you already know that, you know. Uh, accurate is uh, true to the intention. So whatever is expected, you you are able to deliver. But what is precision? Always being uh, always delivering the same result. Given different situations, you will always be precise. Ikaw yung kahit anong mangyari, accurate ka pa rin. Or kahit anong mangyari, you are able to give the stakeholders and your superiors the right decision. You're able to do that because you're both accurate and precise. But I got, because the word that mostly came out was precise, I got the quotation on precision. And it says, precision is, after all, not only a form of responsibility and a kind of pleasure, but an instrument of compassion. Imagine mo, to be precise is to be compassionate. No, it's a type of compassion. And in the Catholic world, in the Christian, or in the, you know, in the our identity as Catholic institutions, precision is really something that we do because we are Catholic. It's part of our job, you know? And to be precise requires care. Kasi ulit-ulit you make sure that everything, all the time, you make sure that all the time you are accurate. All the time you are doing exactly what is expected from you. That is precision. So it really requires care, really requires time and attention to the person. That doc behind that document is a person. So be very, uh, always remember this, that behind that POR, behind that diploma, is the life and the future of the child. Okay? Next, please. So this is it. That, that's it for my local perspective. As I said, I couldn't find anything. So let me show, share to you two international uh, articles I saw. And the first one is from Matthew Pitinsky. He's the own co-founder of Blackboard. And he wrote this in an article. So I'll give you a minute to read my slide about Matthew. So you'll get uh, um, oriented to who Matthew Pitinsky is. You know? So... This is so what this is from an article. I saw his article and I'm getting some of the points in his article. And he even quoted someone who said uh, that he would couldn't be a registrar these days. And when he said that, he meant it as a compliment. Okay. So what are the takeaway points on uh, the talk of Matthew Pitinsky on the evolving role of the registrar? Next, please. So in this article, Mr. Petinsky asked, what is it about the registrar's role today that makes it particularly challenging, which is to say particularly important and central to a campus and to a higher education? That was, what, that was the focus of his talk. Okay? So on the surface, he said, you know, on the surface, you think that the registrar's work on course catalogs, registration, curriculum management, degree audit, credit transfer, transcript fulfillment, and the like represent a stable core to the job. Because that's what we see from the outside, you know, you doing the transfer, you doing the credit audit, you doing transcript fulfillment. That's what we see. But he said, if you look deeper, the registers are located at central intersections, several intersections, several. So maraming intersections kayo. You know, you are in the middle of all this chaos. And he said, you are in the, at the intersection of the following, academic life and administrative life. Protecting student data and making student, student data actionable. And supporting student-led pathways and scaffolding them, okay? So therefore, he said, na yung three priorities, no, actually when you say priority, it should only be one, but this is from his article. He said, the three 
priorities are the heavy roles. And these are the heavy roles that you see in your slide. In my slide, these are number one, keeper of the credential. Keeper, ha, bigat, keeper. You know what a goalkeeper is? That's heavy. So for you, in the academe, you are the keeper of the credentials, okay? Conductor of intra and extra institution degree pathways. So what do you conduct? You know, a conductor, a place that a conductor, he leads a lot of people. And that's your one of your intersections. Because intra-institution, you have to work with all the tracks. You have to work with all the coordinators, with all the chairs and the deans. And you are the guardian of data privacy. Siyempre, my favorite guardian is from Thor. So nilagay ko siya dyan kasi I'm a Thor fan. There, so you are the guardian of data privacy. Let's take them one by one. Next, please. Okay, keeper of the credential. Keeper of the credential. Registers are responsible for academic records and credentials. From the transcript to the diploma, usually, sabi ni Mr. Pitinsky. So that places you at the center of two interrelated priorities, growth in certificate and micro-credentialing programs that are expanding the types and formats of credentials issued by the university. So there are many ways right now that you can get a diploma. There are many programs. We are so open in the new normal that we don't cannot just stick to one. In the new normal, you can give it in many platforms, in many ways. So you are in this intersection, you know? You have to see what are the certificates and micro-credentials, how do we do that? And we're open to international students. We're open to home-based students. Because the old normal, what used to be will not happen now. As they said, we are in this situation that until 2024. So chances are you're the, you keeping the keep as the keeper of the credentials, you have to be able to see how you can do this in the new normal. How do you connect what courses to teach? How students perform? How do you bring them all together? Because, you know, technology will be also in the middle, as I said earlier. Okay, So the registrar is perfectly positioned to be a keeper of competencies and to connect what courses teach, how students perform, and how best to represent what students know and how well they know it across a variety of program formats. Okay, so again, I said that uh, we have to link this with technology. Okay, next one. The second uh, heavy priority, he said, is conductor of intra and extra institution degree pathways. And you can see here how chaotic uh, pathway, you know, if you, if you be very technical about it, this is a pathway, you know, our highways, you know, so the, the register is in the middle. You know, you have, you're doing a lot of things. So your traditional role of degree audit, transfer education, course scheduling, and registration did not get lost pre-pandemic. They're still there and more. So now you have more intersections to deal with, right? If before all you had to do was find it in the, in the system and print it and give it, now you can't do that. How do you now uh, survive with the inter and extra institutional degree pathway? So we have the e extra, we have DepEd, we have CHED, and everything. We have TESDA. How do you conduct those into the intra? Because you cannot just sit there and wait for things to happen. You have to be the one to make things happen because you are at the intersection. You know, the vice president or the principal will depend on the registrar to understand all these things. And the faculty, they don't, you know, they'll just go teach. Once they have the grades, they give it to the registrar. The registrar is going to conduct that. 
And mind you, in the new normal, you have to be clear. What are your intersections? What are the pathways that you have to work with? Because you are in the center. Eh? Okay? It won't be the VP or the principal who will understand this. Because right now, the main problem of the principal and the vice president, if you are in an institution, is how to get students. Because <clears throat> everybody, even the government, is suffering from a decrease in, in uh, enrollment. Last year, there was 20. We had a 26 million enrollment in the in the public school. Now it's 22 million. From your perspective, you may see, ah, marami, 22 million. But wait, last year it was 26 million. We lost 4 million in the public school. I'm sure those people in the public school did not migrate to the private school. But our students in the pri private school migrated to the public school. So that 22 million registered students this year, some of them came from our schools. So it means that mas marami yung hindi na nag-aral. So now the demand is, uh, you know, the, the shoulders are heavy for the, for, the, uh, for the principal and for the for the vice presidents and the deans to look for students because it's we are in the red ocean right now when it comes to enrollment. Last year when I was in the I was I think I gave a talk in say up to I said 438 schools closed in the private sector. When we had a meeting, we had a uh, planning session, our president, Sister Evangeline, said 700 schools. Private schools closed this year. So that's additional three, 300. Because if you were not, if you cannot survive, we're not able to survive properly pre pandemic, you will not make it during the pandemic. So the registrar has to, you know, how do you call that? Uh, buckle up. You have to buckle up and look at this pathway conductor you will have to do this on you know that's your job really don't depend on the deans and chairs they have other things to do grabe ang ano ngayon marketing ngayon patayan tayo dyan diba so survival is key in the pre in the post pandemic in the new normal so this is where you are you should be in that middle conducting the highway okay left right go so that hindi nagbabanggaan because every one student has unique needs so you cannot just say no 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 it's people are not accepting the reason of pandemic anymore they a lot of us have adjusted to the pandemic world so now the students are like no you i want my diploma now you know now na ask balik na tayo sa now 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 ask okay and then the last according to petinsky he said that registrars must be guardians of data privacy Next, please. Okay. The effect, the effect of technology on university and school operations and classroom learning is profound. And it's a positive story, actually, but it certainly comes with challenges, sabi ni Mr. Patinsky. Patinsky. And on challenge, student data privacy is the number one challenge you know how do you secure that how do you go about that all this lms how do we manage that and and then you say is that still my problem as a registrar oh no man anything that's da data information data uh information anything about student that will also fall under the registrar and data privacy is a law okay it's not just a guideline. It's not just an advisory. It is a law. So you can be criminals, you know, <laughs> if you violate this law. My goodness, I never thought working in an academic institution can make me a criminal. Parang gano, diba? I understand in, in, in a hospital, when I was active in my nursing profession, I was sued once, you know, by a patient, a group of, this patient sued uh, three of us. But the hospital fought for us and we won the case because we were really innocent. So I said, ah, mag I go back na lang to academe because, uh, you know, it's uh, less stressful there. I don't talk up, we don't, I don't meet a lot of dying patients, you know, I don't, I might not get sued. Ay, nako, wrong pala yon because data privacy and that 
everything came about. So it's the same thing, no? But uh, different weight, but still heavy when it comes to academic institutions and how to manage and lead an academic institution. And you are central to that. You are key to that. So you have to understand technology. Balik talaga tayo sa precision and being adept with technology. Because how can you look at data privacy? Dati okay lang eh. Kasi pag you can see a paper kung there is tangible proof of data privacy invasion. Eh ngayon, because of the new normal, we are in the soft copy. Everything is here in the net. How do you get there inside? You know, how do you manage that? And you cannot, you cannot walk around the VP, the deeds, and the registrars. We cannot anymore walk around the classroom, the whole corridors of our school anymore and check. Sino ba ang nag plagiarize? Sino ba ang bawa? Who is doing this? We don't have that. How do you monitor that virtually? My goodness, di ba? Para how would I know that at this moment somebody is going against some uh, privacy rules. How, how would I know? Uh, my students who are more adept with technology are accessing my data. How would you know that? Because all we are doing is oh, fa oh, faculty, ha? you should know this. Faculty, faculty, behind that faculty is the student who doesn't need instructions on technology. You know, I have a, um, I have a grant Chad, I'm a Lola, no? So I have a one-year-old, well, I have a 10-year-old uh, Apo, but I have another new one. She's uh, less than two. And she, she can manipulate the YouTube. She can skip ads, skip ads, and then she can, no, 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 no. Ay, gano'n pa siya, no, 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 grandma, no, no, no. Pipindot niya what she wants. And then she, she gets my tab and she says, play. Sabi niya, Elmo. I think I have to, pag yan ay mag-college, magre-retire na ako. Ano? Kasi diba? Ano na? Baka i-hack na niya lahat ng meron ako. And this is what we're dealing with. We're just learning LMS. And you know, to train our students, our faculty for this virtual world took us how many months? But the student, 10 minutes. And what do they do behind our backs? They copy us pa the way we handle it. Yung mga ginagawa nila. Ano ba tawag doon? Parang mga na, nag-tiktok pa sila on how in a depth we are with technology because they can do it faster. And here you are in the middle of this. You know, you have to. So for the new ones who are here, other, you know, integrity, that's a character you're built. So I'm sure you have that you've been in this institution, in the Catholic school, I guarantee na may integrity kayo. Pero yung adept with technology, I think that takes time. So we need, the, I don't know, should the younger ones be made registers was because of this? But the older, the senior ones would say, hey, kulang ng integrity and precision. Yeah, kami technology lang. So there must be balance. I don't know how you can tell, you know. But then, according to Matthew Pestipitinsky, you are the guardian of data privacy. You may not like it, but he said, ito ang kanya ha, registrars must be experts. Yun ang word niya. Experts where? In trends about data access, student data access, management and privacy. You have to be an expert because, you know, the student might be able to access your files before you. Yan ang nakakatakot. And they do it out of fun. I have a friend who did whose daughter at 12 years old stop studying. Why? She's a hacker. And the mother, I don't know why she brought her to our house pre-pandemic because she didn't know what to do. And I said, I counselor na rin pala kami ng husband ko. So we talked to this girl and she said, bakit pa ho ako mag-aral, tito, tita? I earned 10,000 pesos per hack. Sabi ko, magkano kinikita mo ang isang buwan? Sabi ng husband ko, that is not the point. The point is to make her understand to go back to school. Sabi ko, eh, di ba? If she can't, sabi, hindi, hindi. Ikaw naman, parang kang na, naging in intrigued ako. And I was like thinking, if this 12 years old can hack, and these are our students in the, in the elementary high school, my God, and we are in this new normal, we are technology dependent but are we technology savvy can we do 
the how may tawag nila doon in in the IT para uh, pag something happens can you intercept can you intervene i don't know these are nursing words intervene i don't know the IT words but can you go in that uh, you know can i go inside this uh, laptop and work on it oh my god that's your job as registrars okay <laughs> okay so now though you even play an even larger part in navigating uh, the word is navigating the issues associated with ever expanding data and data models of student learning and administrative activity so you you're not just looking at what models can the students have you know for them to have better access for them to survive in this pandemic because they're bored you know you cannot bring your old classroom into this new classroom. They will die. In the old, in the old classroom, they were dying from your face. Eh, you know? The way we teach them, ah, why, why films yan? E sanay nga nga sila sa Tom and Jerry. And they, also, they have Minecraft or they create on their own. You know? And now we are in the new normal. How do you improve that as registrars? Let me see. Bakit po, Doc Shen? Kami rin ba yun? Oo, kasama kayo doon kasi you are in the, at the intersection. You know, you have to assess also the deans and the chairs. The role of the registrar is not clerical. The role of the registrar is transformational. You have to transform. You have to be there to assess in the transformation of education. And transformation should have happened last year when we hit the pandemic. Okay? But then again, sabi, Pilipinas naman kami. Delayed naman. <laughs> Ten years delayed. O oh, sige, you can transform now. <laughs> Next, please. <laughs> and then this is the... Okay, para lang meron tayong one, one minute. Inhale, exhale. Maiba naman ang scenario. No? I chose a picture. Say, kung paano ba, you know? This, kanina, all technology, heavy techy intersections, para baka ma-heart attack na kayo, no? So, I I, uh, I guess your work really has become more demanding as we shifted platforms. So after showing you stressful images, you know, let me just show you a flower. I love this picture. Tingnan mo, oh, parang wow, slowly, slowly evolving from a bud to full bloom. Okay, so yung mga na-stress sa to ko, sorry ha, yun lang talaga, we have to be true, okay? And then I wanted, you know, para naman may one minute break for your, uh, for your state, for your psychological and emotional state. So, uh, uh, and when I, uh, in the article of Pitinsky, I was struck by this quotation he shared. Jules, can you show the quotation? Sabi niya, after, after everything else, we should recognize that at the center of enrollment and employment pathways is the registrar. Nasa git, nasa git, you are really at the center. Whose evolving role encompasses challenging and important work with transformational impact. So, ang ending ninyo is a transformational impact. That's why it's essential for you registrars to be involved with programs on leadership and all these things that you have to make your presence, presence felt and more so now in the new normal. Okay? Sige, next tayo. Uh, troubleshooting. Thank you, Monica. That's the right word. Troubleshooting. So you have to know that because it's akin intervening yung pag sa nursing. Okay, so I wanted you to, uh, originally I wanted you to type in some words that um, resonated with you the most. You can start doing that, but I will continue with my talk because I have a few more minutes left, okay? So maybe some of you can start putting in a word or a few words that struck you in my uh, in what uh, I have shared from the from my study or mini study with some of the vice presidents locally and uh, with what uh, Mr. Petinsky shared so it would be good you know reflect ano ba ang napaka na, na ah, pinakatumam uh, nag hit sa akin what resonated with me the most okay and the last 
I hope you read this article. This is the only full-blown article on university register that I found. And I'm happy Jules gave me enough time because I thought it, it's easy to find, but it wasn't. So the time he gave me from the time I, he invited me and today he gave me a lot of time to do research. And this one, I hope you get this. This is um, a full article on Southern Africa, higher education, but you can do this. Those who are in research who are doing master's work, you can pattern this, and this is a good research paper, okay? Kasi maganda to makita, wala po talaga in the Philippines, and one of you, please come up with your changing role in the Philippine educational system. We need it badly, okay? But I will already share with you key points because I want you to get hold of this article and read it on your own. Marami, marami, marami. Ang ganda ng kanyang uh, inputs. Okay? So let me just uh, give you the three key takeaways I, I found in this paper. Next, please. Okay. So again, ikot-ikot. But still, in this, in his study, found out that in in uh, in South Africa, the registrar is still in must be into this technology, leadership, and positioning. Kaya ang ganda si ko, wow, perfect for the theme positioning. Because he said that he this article talked about positioning in in this in um you know he talked about this in his paper. Next part. Okay, so technology, according to the paper, and we all know this, the technological revolution is the single most important factor changing your role as registrars in, you know, as university and college registrar. It is the single most important factor. It has turned registration and records function into automated activities, which are turning the registrar into a data manager. And I just saw someone type in data manager. Today, so he asked, is the job of the registrar running at the risk of disappearing? Sabi ni Lanier, as a result of technology, the registration and records functions are becoming more automated and the register is becoming more of a data manager. But, malaki yung but niya. In spite of increasing invisibility, technology is not replacing the register, but technology is rather changing the registrar's role within the university. So do not be complacent. And say, oh, no, I, you're not, you don't need me. I don't have to do so much because the data plat the platform is there. There's IT. No, you use technology to your advantage because your roles are changing. Before, you could have resisted it. Eh? Pwede naman, pwede pa naman pen and paper. Ah, pwede naman isulat yan. Pwede naman, hindi na eh. New normal na. And we're not gonna go back to how it was before. Okay, so use technology to your advantage because that's gonna that has changed your role and you know find ways. Video at ayon, we find ways. Find ways. Hindi naman ako ano ng film, ano naman ako ng color ng video. We should you should find ways on how to make technology work for you and for the stakeholders. Okay. So ano pa ba ang sabi? Ah. Uh, Kasi, di ba, as I said earlier, with computers and wireless devices becoming more affordable and universal, the students expect and even demand. You know, yan, 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 maraming demand sa inyo. Maraming demanding sa inyo dyan. Sa, sa, you know, the people who go to register are always angry. <laughs> I noticed that. And I'm like, okay, why do, why, why, why do they get angry when they go to register? But when they go to the VP Akad, nakangiti sila. Takot ba sila sa VP? Paano kaya ang perception ng mga parents and students sa registrar's office? You know, and that's also a wonder for me. Why can they, why are they, why is it easy for them to get angry? You know? Kaya mamaya, I have my own words later. Paano naman you have to turn around registrar's office, you know, and make it a parent. Sandali lang, register ito. 
guardian ito, conductor ito, big time po ito. You know, we are at the center. The university will not exist without a registrar. I'm telling you, kasi nga, di ba, in the medieval, the first role that was created in an academic institution was the chancellor. Then came the registrar. Because the chancellor cannot do the job without the registrar. Ganon ka-importante yun, okay? So yun, yun lang ang mga nakita ko. Dito natuwa nga ako. I was reading, oh my God, what a difficult uh, job it is, you know? Next. Then the second uh, key takeaway I want, other than technology, is leadership. Ito na yun. Heading na ako towards John. So according to Smith, hmm, I can't see the slide, Jules. Yan. Smith emphasizes that registrars must lead. Must lead talaga, ha? Through expertise. Okay? So hindi pwede... Uh, bakit po ako naging registrar? Kasi magaling ka maturo. Hindi pwede ka. Huwag kayo ma-victim sa ganon. May mga madre pari ba dito? Kasi ako na victim. Sabi ko, sister, why am I why am I plucked from academe and made into the director for planning and quality assurance? And my, the sister said, because you can speak and speak and write English well. Ah, <laughs> Yes, because of obedience. My God, my job was quality about, you know, it helped to write and speak well, but that was just a konti lang sa quality assurance and planning. My, my life became crazy. So, anong expertise nyo? Mention na natin kanina yun, ha? number one, really, you have to, memory nyo dapat mabilis. Kasi with deans and chairs and principals, ano, uh, Miss, ganun, ano nga yun, ganyan, ganyan, sabi ng DepEd? Wow! Diba? Kung pwede lang, sandali, ha? Hmm, i-flash ko sa'yo from my brain. Hindi <laughs> naman, parang, everybody, ano nga yung si, kami sa amin, Rich, ano nga yung CMO ng ganun-ganun? Wow naman, diba? Para I think the, the informatics must be in your brain. So, your expertise is not only in technology, it should also be on memory, retention, grabe, grabe, acknowledge yun dyan. Ability, experience, sound judgment, and consistency, okay? So that sound and judgment mo, kasi whatever you recommend usually is listened to. Because a lot of, I, I, do, I hope I don't get in trouble, ha? but a lot of the ad, academic administrators really don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they're placed, they're, but not the principal, ano? Kaya pa tagritayan ako. But you know, some of them are so confused with what's happening. Another story yun, in, ayun nandun. Eh, sabi mo eh, sabi ng register eh. You know, the moment you sit there, the following day, you should know them and, you know, the, the following day, you should know all the CMOs. Anong sinabi? Anong sinabi? Saan galing yun? You know, ay, kahapon po, faculty lang po ako. Na yun know, register ako, you expect me to know all these things. Because that is the expectation from register. Consistency pati, okay? And that expectations from registrars are your academic background, your higher academic degree. So, you know, you have to build up those, that portfolio, empathy with the academic enterprise, and an instinctive sense. Wow. Instinct, ha? Dapat meron kayo na. May gut feel kayo. Mm. You can smell. Dapat ano kayo? Empirical. You can see, hear, smell, and taste records. My God. Diba that? Sandali, sister, mali yata itong na, naamoy kong record. Dapat ka ganun kayo pagaling, di ba? Instinctive daw, sabi, sense of what is in the academic world. Sister, mukhang parating na po ang new, ano, dapat alam nyo yan. So, how do you do this? Uh, be aware of what is happening outside. Be aware of what's happening inside. So, dapat scanner din kayo. Hindi lang kayo data manager. Nakakascan pa kayo. Nakakaprint pa kayo. So, Oh my God, you are, uh, what? What kind of machine does that, no? Nag-encode na, nag-scan na, nag-print na. Oh, yan kayo. That's the world of the register. And you have to be a leader pa. Oh my goodness, okay? <laughs> Next. Well, your friend, let me read some of what you have said. Let me see. Wow, talaga naman mga marami akong kathor dito na ano ang kanilang so, <clears throat> let me just read. Role is transformational, not 
clerical. Agree. The registrar's office is the central hub. It is. It really is. And you have to price that. That is really your role. Central ka, nasa gitna. Curriculum expert. Okay, the registrar is the keeper of data privacy and being an expert in curriculum. Data manager, guardian of data privacy, be in the here and now with integrity and being up with the changes. Be bold. Wow, ganda. Guardian of data privacy, head of MIS. Oh my goodness, that's right. Guardian of data privacy. Registrar's role is complex, challenging, yet very important. Correct. Agree talaga ako dyan sa mga reflections. Compassionate innovation. I love this. You, know? you innovate but with compassion. Para masaya si Christ sa atin. Transformational impact. And the registry is here to stay. From medieval to cosmic times. Wow. Cheers to our beloved registrar. Kakatuwa. As a leader, a registrar encourage just innovations. Yes. That should, I think the principal should be here so they will realize that excuse us the registers are not just to encode your data we are here because we are leaders in our own right <clears throat> research engagement and collaboration that's right so and then the last is managing the intersections kita nyo si Pitinsky nagsabi ng intersection Sinabi ulit dito sa Africa, so talaga kayo, you are in this intersection. So sometimes when you tell yourself, ba't ang daming-daming ginagawa? Bakit ka lahat na sa akin? Kasi yun yun. That is reality for the register. You are in the intersection. Okay? You are at the intersection when it comes to academic institutions and the survival of the academic So dapat may position na consistency kayo and certainty. Kanino? Sa students, external stakeholders, faculty and administrators, andyan ka oh, always raising your hand. Yes po, ready. Diba? Ganyan. Ready to serve. Oh, diba? Saan ko narinig yan? Kanina, video pa narinig ko na. Ready to serve. Jolly B ba yun? Mag Ay, hindi ko alam. Basta I hear that when I used to go. Ha? Ano? Ano, Diyos? Magsalita ka, admit mo. Bawal mo mag-alit. Save mo. Save mo. Ah, save mo. Ah, pa rin. Ah, grabe talaga to si... Sino ba yan? Si Henry C? Ang galing, ha? Okay. So, ano ang ready to serve ka dyan, di ba? Kasabi dito, they're expected to ah, save more. Aba, nagsa-save more. Kayo, pandemic na. Bawal <laughs> <laughs> Grab na lang. They're expected to serve the interests of all these parties. Oh my God, marami. Or to challenge. Pwede naman kayo mag-challenge pala. Or to simply mediate through advice. Okay? Within the parameters of the institutional mission and purposes. And the internal and external regulatory frameworks and structures. So anong positioning nyo? Inside, you have you are at the center of the needs of the students, faculty, mag-encode ng faculty. Ano nga ulit ang password ko? Diba? Ako yan lagi. So I wrote it down. Kaya saan ko nga sinulat yon? So lagi pagbating, Doc, ito po yung password mo. So ganon. So yun ang kakal. Ano na nga ulit ang anong proseso? Paano na nga ulit? Tapos ang pandemic. Ano nga ulit? Diba? Pangalan lang na alala. The rest na iwan na. So register ikaw, memorize mo yan. Administrators, what to do, what to do? How come we don't have ano, uh, enough students? Register. Ha? Ano ako yun? <laughs> ako rin ba yun? E admission. Lahat yan. And external stakeholders, they want to transfer. They want to go to another school. You know, everything. They want to get the diploma and all these things. You are in the middle positional. And then you are also ang position nyo rin, outside, external. Ang daming mga external. Ngayon may IATF pa kayo. Hindi, dati ba diba, DepEd lang. Now you're also looking at the DOH, IATF. Diba? Tumitingin din kayo, ano nang sabi? Ano na tayo? So we came from all the cues, cues, and now we're now to alert. You know, the registrar has to know these things. Because you kind of have to text the sisters and the and other uh, at least eh, hindi bawal magano bawal lo tayo mag ganyan sabi ng IATF o di nag nagresearch ka alam mo so you do, your external stakeholders are not it's not anymore that end na lang or <clears throat> or Chad you're also looking at all these things and this is here to stay I'm telling you okay and I found this uh, metaphor very very nice you know ang sabi dito sa paper to 
the registrar daw, eh, pakinggan niya to ha, is likened to a sandwich. Aba, kayo pala sandwich pala kayo. And a referee. Hindi ko na sinulad dito. Sabi nila, sabi dito sa article, so I tell you, read this article. It is not the inside of the sandwich that is important, but the outside. So kayo, kayo yung bread. In, in the Philippines, kayo yung tasty, okay? Kayo yung bread. Why? Because you are providing the protective tissue to the one inside. Nakalagay dito, hindi akin to ha, ah, dito sa article. Sino daw yung nasa loob? Yung coordinator, yung dean, yung principal. <laughs> At yung other, ano? Sorry ha. Ah. I'm just saying what is what I read in the article. But the registrar, like to a sandwich, kayo yung nagbibigay ng protection, kayo yung nagtakasyon. So kayo ngayon, kung stress na stress ka, ay tama lang. Kasi that is your job pala. You are. In the sandwich, you are not the feeling. You are the one supporting the feeling. Oh my God. Diba? And you are a good referee. <clears throat> Why? Because you, uh, you control the game. Oh, nakalagay dito ha. It's the... You are a good referee because a register controls the game, but you do not interfere with the process. So kung nagbaboxing-boxing na yung, yung principal at yung faculty, ikaw yung referee. You do not interfere with the process, but you control. Sa'yo pupunta eh. Sabihin mo sa amin, ano ang totoo? Totoo ba na ganyan ganyan? Yes po, Article 5. So that's your job. Yes po. CMO, blah, blah, blah. Imagine mo, you're not only agaan namin yung role. So if you're tired at this point in time, I, I think the world should understand because it is really tiring to be in your position. Okay? So next. So eto na ang diagram ng article na to. Yan kayo. O? Oh, o oh, ha? Hindi ako gumawa niyan. Screenshot ko yan. Tapos pinost ko dito kasi I, I don't want to go. You know, I don't want to create a similar one. My God. I was thinking, will I make my own slide? Why will I do it? I don't want to do it. It's so much. The thought of typing your function on my own made me so tired already. So what did I do? Screenshot ko. <laughs> pinost ko siya. Yan po, ang function ng registrar. Goodness. Picture niya yan. Ilagay niyo sa, ilagay niyo sa, ano, sa, how do you call, screen ba yun? The screen of your laptop. Or kung oldie-oldie ka, like me, ilagay mo sa picture frame. I didn't want to say picture frame kasi no one used picture frame. <laughs> Naya ako mag-reveal. So ano ba ang tawag dyan? Screen. I don't even know the name. My God. Okay, so yan ang role nyo. Let's not discuss that in detail. Okay, baka you'll not have a good lunch. Let's go to the next. I have 10 more minutes. <laughs> Last two minutes. So summary. What are the bold strokes for you to position in the new normal? And this is my own take on your role. With, with my uh, experience in the academy of more than 21 years, number one is lead. Number two is qualify. And number three is expand. So my own, this is, these are my own uh, uh, recommendations for you to position in the new normal. I believe, oh, diba? May ganun pa ko. I believe <laughs> that registrars must position themselves as leaders. In an academic institution, I wish most more registers would be out there to lead because you got you you know you are central to the function of the university. I'm telling you that without uh, the registrar beside me for the for five years, I would not have made it. <laughs> Your voice matters. So qualify. If you are not qualified in terms of technology data analytics, curriculum, communication, and leadership, you know, go out there and qualify yourself, okay? You can go to St. Paul and be qualified. Pwede ba ako mag-flex dito na? <laughs> and then, and then this way you expand, okay? In comfort, don't expand in weight, ha? Kasi mahirap yun. We need you there. Masasakit ang mga tuhod-tuhod nyo. Expand in competencies perspectives and influence, you know? 
why do I say perspectives? Broaden, broaden what you think a registrar's job should be. And influence, you know, work out there with external uh, stakeholders. Your influence with uh, regulating and accrediting bodies will matter. You know, don't say, ah, hindi, hindi naman ako, registrar. Behind the scene ako, no, I hope this... Uh, session with me has shown you that you are not, you cannot. Ako, in most of my meetings, I would always say, sama ka sa akin, <laughs> you know. Very, ano ko kasi, uh, uh, so my God, so if I need the register beside me, I cannot, you know. I, uh, my role is to look forward, but somebody has to be my anchor, and that has always been the register. So this, that is how great, hindi lang siguro masyado palpable, but you have to make it palpable by leading, qualifying, and expanding. So I hope if there are principals here, managers here, please, you know, take care of all, all, of all our registers. Because in leading, qualifying, and expanding, remember, your function is not on that document alone. Because behind that document is a person. And his or her future depends on you. So to align this to your theme, gifted to give, I think you also have to give inwardly so that you will be able to give outwardly. And that I learned from the sisters in St. Paul. Give time to uh, hone your talents, Shen, so that in honing your talents, you can make your, your you know, the institution better and you will be able to give more to the people you serve. Okay? And I end this with a quotation from a certain Alina Aloysius. And Shen ka pa ba, Jules? Meron pa ako isang quotation, pero kung wala na, asa na? So wala na ata si Jules. So wala na siya, Riz. Anyway, I don't have my PowerPoint. It's with him. But then again, I hope uh, I was able to, uh, how do you call this, satisfy the expectations of all those in this uh, a conference and I end, you know, again with my last three, please, please, please lead, qualify and expand. So with that, I thank you for actively listening. And I see a lot of uh, chats in the chat box. Maybe Riza can read them, who, whoever can read them here because these are all good uh, inputs to this uh, day session. And with that, I thank you. Let's all give Dr. Chen a virtual round of applause. Let's all hit our um, applause buttons. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Chen. Thank you for reminding us that our voice as registrars matters. Okay, so at this point, we would like to hear from you. Okay, um, get your mobile phones or devices ready um, because we will be having our evaluation of this session. Okay, so please note that in uh, that in the chat box, the uh, the Bitly link will for the evaluation will be posted. Okay, so there you go. So in order to receive and quali uh, to receive your certificate and to qualify for the raffle, please make sure to um, accomplish the evaluation link. Okay, so. We'll give you a few seconds to accomplish the form, okay? Um, at this point, we would also like to um, ask you if you have any questions, you may now, I think we can accommodate looking, uh, looking at the time. We have three minutes left. Uh, maybe we can, if you have, if anyone has a question, maybe just one, if any. So far, Dr. Chen, um, all, um, all wonderful, um, they're all expressing their gratitude, Dr. Shen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Scarpo na ano eh, sandali ha, ayusin ko lang. Thank you. There you go. Ma'am, the one who won, the first one of Titan Integrity, can she give me a private, a direct message so I can send her at 200 pesos? I promise ako, I have to be with integrity. Okay. So I can now send the 200 Gcash. All right. Ma'am. Welcome everyone. It's Miss Marianne. 
Ma'am, there's just one question. If the role, if the registrar's role is so crucial and irreplaceable, do you think it's high time to design or include a bachelor's degree for future registrars? Why not? Why not? Is there a bachelor's degree for registrar? <laughs> Wala! Oh my goodness. Oh, you know, uh, or you can create postgraduate degree. You know, sometimes kasi, I'll, uh, because you have to know curriculum. So most often, most often you don't get directly to the registrar's office, right? You're either a faculty or a staff and then you, you get a master's degree and then you get, uh, you get uh, <clears throat> invited or you are promoted to the role of registrar. I think your group, you, you create a, a postgraduate certificate program on the registrar. I don't know how you can call it. Usually a postgraduate certificate is only six, uh, six courses. 18 units yan. And then as uh, a SEAC, you can have that uh, credited. Kasi hindi naman siya ano eh, evolving kasi ang role ng register. So it would be good not to offer it as a bachelor's but a postgraduate degree. And this is what happened. I learned about that when I was when I got a scholarship in UK through Southville. So the, I was one of those who, who was given and it's more on qualifications through a postgraduate certificate. And uh, Singapore does that, you know, kasi mahirap naman kung mag-bachelors, baka hindi naman masyadong, you know, para mas, how do you call that? So kasi mas maganda kung iba-ibang perspectives. And then postmasters, you create a PGC. And SEA can do that. You know, you can work with St. Paul. For those who are in St. Paul, we give out, uh, we do postgraduate certificates we have on learning management because some, most of us are already qualified at the master's level. We don't want a double master's. That's not the trend anymore. So you want to qualify yourself with PGCs. AIM does that. So mahal lang sa AIM at 200,000, 300,000, pero puro sila postgraduate certificate to add on to your current um, qualifications. So why don't you propose that and you can partner SEAP can do that and partner with a school or uh, groups of schools can partner and we can make a program. So some of you can create it and then ano naman yan, hindi kailangan ng CHED, uh, CHED, uh, how do you call that? I don't think you have to inform CHED of a postgraduate certificate program. That's a better track for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Un unfortunately, it's uh, uh, we're uh, running out of time. So at this point, let's all show our deep appreciation again to Dr. Chen. Click your heart button, okay? And um, to show our thanks for sharing and uh, for her sharing and her presentation this morning. So let's. Uh, I will read to you the certificate, and it reads: The Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines National Capital Region awards a Certificate of Appreciation and Gratitude to Dr. Marichen A. Bichanko, Registered Nurse and Doctor of Philosophy, uh, for her uh, in grateful recognition for her invaluable contribution and service as resource speaker during the CAP and CR 2021 General Assembly Learning Session 8 Register Committee entitled Bold Strokes Pos Positioning the Register in the New Normal, given this 18th day of September 2021. Signed by Mr. Jose Ramel E. Javier, Chair of the CEAPNCR 2021 General Assembly, and Father Nolan A. K., Regional Trustee of uh, CEAPNCR. Thank you. Thank you again, Dr. Chen, from the bottom of our hearts. Welcome and thank you for the invitation. We are so appreciative, ma'am. All right. So now we, we will be. All right. So now we call on our uh, Miss, Mrs. Sheila Agulto, our registrar from Inan ng Buhay Catholic School, to lead us in the closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Spirit of God rests upon me. The Spirit of God consecrates me. The Spirit of God bids me go forth to proclaim God's peace and joy. The Spirit of God sends me forth, called to witness the kingdom of God among all nations, called to proclaim the goodness of God 
to the poor, called to console the hearts to overcome with great sorrow, called to comfort the poor who mourn and who weep, called to announce the grace of salvation to all, called to reveal the glory among all people. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Sheila. Now, friends, don't leave just yet. Okay, we will have our... This, this is now the time for our selfie and our groupie. Okay, we will ask um, our partners from the Secretariat. May I ask everyone to turn on their camera so that we can participate in the, in the photo? All right. Okay, there are, if I'm not mistaken, there are 12 um, screens. So kindly, uh, kindly give your best smile. Okay. All right, we'll take our photos. Thank you, sir. Okay, so now it's time for our raffle using our Wheel of Names. We will have five winners receiving 500 pesos each. Okay. I hope you accomplished the evaluation link to qualify for our uh, this afternoon. It's already afternoon. Okay. Thank you, CEAPNCR, for your generosity. And thank you also to our sponsors. Okay. All right. We're waiting for the Wheel of Names. All right. Please don't forget that later this afternoon, please come back for our closing Eucharistic celebration. Okay, uh, 4 p.m. again, 4 p.m. will be our closing Eucharistic celebration. Also, for those who were able to take their selfies, please don't forget to upload to uh, the CAP NCR Facebook page with the hashtags, hashtag CAP NCR and hashtag CNGA2021. Okay, so again, we, we are waiting for... Um, our five winners, okay, who will win 500 pesos each. Yes, and again, thank you. Thank you, Doc Chen. All right. Okay, we're just waiting for the names, eagerly awaiting. I hope you all were able to um, accomplish our evaluation form. from San Felipe Neri Catholic School. Congratulations! And our second winner, Miss Bethel Ann Steve Batallones of Saints Palasticas College, Manila. Congratulations, Miss Bethel! Mariden GP of Colegio de Santa Ana. And our last winner is Levi B. Guevara of St. Joseph School of the Galamine. Okay. 
All right. Thank you again, everyone. Congratulations to all our winners. And thank you again for attending our session today entitled Bold Strokes Positioning the Register in the New Normal. And I hope we bring back all our learnings to our respective schools and continue to be effective and efficient with integrity, no? uh, registrars. Before we all go again, please be reminded to come back at 4 p.m. for our closing Eucharistic celebration. Take care, everyone, and stay safe. Don't forget to upload your selfies. God bless everyone. Thank you.